Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Mind Split Cafe. Today, as you can tell, Matt is on the road, so he will not be with us. But we actually have a really special episode today. I think it's kind of fitting considering this week is Overdose Awareness Week. And actually, the day, well, it'll be the day before Overdose Awareness Day that we'll be releasing this on August 30th. So I find it to be extremely fitting, kind of serendipitous, because we were supposed to do this last week. And now we're here. So I think it worked out for, uh, for the better. So uh, I want to introduce yourself, or I, I want to see if you can introduce yourself, let everyone know where you're at, what you're doing, and why you're here. So my name is Laura Solomon. I'm the director of Advanced Treatment Center, also known as Advanced Rapid Detox. And we are a four-day inpatient residential opiate detox, and we're located in Michigan. Um, we treat patients who come to us to get off of um, doctor prescribed pain meds if they're ready, uh, as well as um, street fentanyl, heroin, methadone, suboxone, and kratom. Wow, so you actually get them off suboxone too? Yes. That's interesting. I know that one's a, a tough one uh, to get off of. It kind of stays in your bones, it seems like. So interestingly enough, um, I've been here almost nine years. And when I started, that was the tough one. Um, you know, when we go through the list of like, what's the hardest thing to get off of now with the unique blend of um, fentanyl that's on the street, <laughs> uh, that is the tougher thing because it's mixed in with all kinds of um interesting things. And that's actually Suboxone is like one of the easier things, comparatively speaking. Oh, that's, that's actually a good thing. Cause now it's easier to, to get off that taper or to right. even just get off of it and, and live your life free of it. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to ask this burning question that I'm sure you guys have heard many, many times. What defers you from a traditional detox? What does advanced rapid detox do? that sets you aside from all the others? I, I think that's a great question to start with. So it's a loaded question. So I'll <laughs> say any recovery is good recovery. Absolutely. We don't claim that what we do is um, better or that you have to be here. We think anywhere you go, anything you do, any way you get what you need is a good thing. Absolutely. Uh, so with that being said, um, the patients we see, um, it, we are a private pay service. Okay. So to differentiate, most traditional rehabs are covered by insurance. Yes, or not. Um, many insurance companies do reimburse what we do, but with, with oh. that in mind, um, ours is a four day process. Our patients check in usually on a Monday. They have all their labs, testing, therapy, meeting with the doctor for case planning. Uh, uh, and if they're on a substance like methadone or suboxone or even kratom or fentanyl, um, they continue to use whatever they're using until Monday night. We don't want them in withdrawals. Yeah. That's, um, that's an interesting approach. I So is there a... It, obviously you kind of just said it that you just don't want them in withdrawals, but is there a medical concern as to why you're doing it this way? Okay. I just wanted to make, no, that. it's just that when you look statistically at traditional rehabs, many people walk because they're in withdrawal, right? They're in withdrawal. So we don't want in withdrawals. We can do what we do up and with you using up until the night before. Wow. That's interesting. Yes. So on Tuesday, uh, the doctor who is a board certified anesthesiologist and addiction specialist, and she's been doing this procedure for 17 years. This is not new to us. Um, she puts the patients under IV sedation. They are not intubated. There's no tube down their throat. There's no catheter in their bladder. It's the so same. So it's not like they're going through surgery or anything. No, it, okay. it's the same sedation as, um, a root canal, a wisdom. So it's, it's local anesthesia, not general, correct? Correct. Okay, cool. So they're under sedation. They don't remember anything. And they're under sedation between eight and 16 hours. So here's where the 
good part happened. <laughs> it's not just about the sedation period. While they're under sedation, the doctor uses medications that reverse the opiates from the receptor. So it clears out the methadone, suboxone, crate, ianapine, fentanyl. It, it, that's when it happens, while they're under sedation. So they don't remember any of their withdrawals. So I, my brain just went a million miles an hour when you said that, and I could be off on the wrong path. But when you say you use this medication to push the uh, opiate off the receptors, I'm assuming it's Narcan or Naloxone or something of that nature? So it can be. Okay. Um, again, we see patients between age 18 and age 60. We see patients on every kind of substance, and we see patients on every kind of other meds. Yeah. So when they're coming to us, everybody has a little bit different profile. And that's why they do case planning and lab work with the doctor so that she can determine what she uses. That I am so glad you said that because in, in the therapy side of things of addiction, SUD, it, it, it's not a one size fits all and things need to be tailored to each case. Thank you. So even detox needs to be tailored. I love that. That is so awesome. Right. So we see people who demand, I want to know exactly online on TikTok. You tell me what she's going to use. Well, how would I know? We have to see you and we have to, like you said, tailor the program specifically to you and your height, age, weight medical conditions, medicines you're on for other reasons. It, it's not a one size fits all. I love that. And I, I think that that's awesome that even during the, and don't take me wrong. I think all of recovery is important, but detox is one of the most important aspects. It's the first step. It's the hardest step to take. Thank you. And so I love how you guys are tailoring it to, to someone, bringing them where they're at and not making them come to you. Exactly. So we have that. And then when the patient finishes sedation, they rest and recuperate. We're a private hospital. So they have a private room. And we tell people to, we manage expectations for sure. Anybody who tells you you'll finish this type of process at one of the five places in the country that does this, if they tell you, you will have no withdrawal symptoms and you will be a hundred percent, that's not true. That's bullshit. You could say it. That's bullshit. Um, so we tell people you're going to have some symptoms. There's going to be some side effects. Yes. It's inevitable. So it'll happen a little bit at least. A little bit. So we have medication that we administer for a few days until those symptoms pass. So as an example, we tell people to expect they may have some restless leg syndrome. Okay, we have requip for that. They may have some muscle pain. We have gabapentin for that. They may experience some nausea. We have Zofran or promethazine for that. So any symptom they could have, we have something that they can take for a few days until it passes. You guys so, have the comfort meds to take yeah, care of the little minute things. Exactly. So um, we, thank God, we had out data done um, by some medical students. Uh, and at the five-year mark, our patients were still clean 85% of the time. <laughs> and the 15% rate of a relapse was generally among IV users, because they're not just um, addicted, if you will, to the act of using, but to the act of self-harm. Yep. Preparing it, getting it together. Yeah, yep. I, I can understand that. That's more habitual per se than anything else. Yeah, that's I love how that, that this is so much more than when I was scrolling on TikTok and I went to your website and it you guys, I mean, you guys do a great job of explaining things on the website, but this is just so much more in depth than what I would even imagine. And I, I think it's phenomenal. Okay. Uh, and there's just so much to unpack. So I, I just want to, there's a couple other things that I, I find burning in my brain that it, it's awesome, but I just want to roll it back one quick. You said that 
they recuperate for, or so it's Monday through Thursday, four days. Correct. So they're asleep those four days or, no, un, they're, oh, sorry, only 48 hours. Well, no, they're only under sedation Tuesday. Okay. Wednesday, they're up and alert and awake, walking, you know, walking around, okay. eating everything, but they're in our facility. There are places that do this um, same procedure in uh, Florida, California, uh, and two other ones in Michigan, and they have patients recover in a hotel. Oh. We, we don't, I, I'm, again, I'm glad anyone's getting help anywhere they go. I'm not judging anything. I think the main difference is that we have them recover in a private hospital with care. Yeah, I think that given the chance to possibly mess up, there's, you know, you know, I mean, you're, you're in a confined wall and you can control pretty much everything that's going on in those four walls at the hospital. Right. But those well, four walls at the motel or hotel doesn't. Anything can happen. Somebody can just spike a fever. They can get dehydrated. They can, I'd rather, yeah. I mean, again, I look at it like I, I'm a mother of nine children. My kids yeah. range between 25 and 37. Um, I try to look at patients since that is our demographic as they're my kids when they're here. And I wouldn't want my kids recovering in a hotel, but that's me. If you can do it, I don't care where you go, get help. Just as long as you get help. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Um, I wonder why they send to a hotel. That's a, uh, that's very interesting, especially cause you have no control over anything that may happen as far as like, like you said, a, a fever spikes or, they're starting to feel so much discomfort. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting that they do it that way. Um, so hmm, there's a, I love, there's just so many questions I have in my head. I'm um, right. So, you know, I know there's going to be some skeptical people out there. Sure. So for the skepticism, what do you, cause, and this may be a hard question to answer just because skepticism ranges in various different comments. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the skepticism a little bit. Let's debunk that. Give us some idea of, of what you're going through as far as rebuttals or people saying, saying that that can't happen or whatever the case is. Well, I, I can't speak to anybody's skepticism because I can only speak to the experience I've had here for nine years and 5,000 patients. And I think our greatest gift we have in what we do is that our past patients volunteer to talk to future patients and share their experiences. So it's one thing to talk to some broad who works at a place. Oh, okay. Um, that's okay. You don't want to talk to me. I'm good. How about I just give you names and numbers of people who've been here for treatment. You can call them yourself. And that to me really speaks volumes because when our patients leave here on Thursdays, I always say to them, if anyone wants to talk to someone who's been here, can I give them your name and number? Hell yeah, if I can get off this A, B, C, D, anyone can. Um, so you can be skeptical, that's okay. I can only tell you that the 5,000 people I've worked with, thank God, the majority of them, um, you know, come through the other side with shining colors would take a phone call. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I think that that's probably one of the best, uh, best ways is testimonials. Um, yep. it, it can crush any skepticism, any doubts. And, and I it's think it, not testimonials that are written. Cause I could write those. Yeah, no, they're voiced. They're there's so-and-so in Alabama in, uh, you know, in Texas and it pick up a phone, call them, text them, do it yourself. You don't have to trust what I'm saying. It's okay. The proof is in the pudding, as they used to say, right? <laughs> and I always find it interesting that somebody would literally buy fentanyl on the street from anyone and never ask one question about what's in it, but they're going to quiz a doctor. A doctor, yeah. Yeah, but that's That's okay. crazy, right? That's okay. I never, I never thought of it that way, but that is absolutely ass backwards if you ask me get patients who when we give them their labs and we say in your fentanyl is um you know mdma pcp tricyclic antidepressants tramadol it's all mixed in there oh xylazine oh yeah 
okay, your skin, your flesh is being eaten off and you're going to ask if we are giving you something safe. Okay. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> That's kind of, it's funny. I mean, I, the, the addicted brain is, is interesting. And I, I know I've been there before, so it's, it's funny to laugh about the things now, but you know, as I mentioned before, all parts of recovery are extremely important. Detox is, I think, one of the most important steps. It's the hardest thing to do. It's the hardest thing to get into because of the pain and things you go through. So I know that you guys are now working on alleviating that process. And I think it's phenomenal. And, you know, most programs or most detoxes or RTCs, residential treatment centers, IOPs or things like that, um, they have kind of a built-in program for like aftercare or even at an RTC, you know, you do your detox, you get integrated into the community and, and you do the 12 steps or whatever type of program it is. Do you guys, I, I know that you guys don't, it doesn't seem like you offer some sort of something like that, but do you work with other people and get them involved? How does that work? We have a, a therapist who specializes in substance use disorder who sees every single patient, they leave with her info and they are, she contacts them after, but they're also welcome to call her anytime forever at no charge. They that also- That is awesome. Yes, they also leave obviously with my number, but with the nurse's number. So any concerns they have about medication adjustment or how they're feeling or just in general, they can call us anytime forever, no charge. And if they prefer to have somebody in their own area, we can put them in touch with treatment centers, with IOPs, and or with therapists in their home area if they prefer to see someone face to face. That's, that's awesome. So what about like sober livings? Do you guys connect with sober livings and help them get integrated into something like that as well? Sure. If they need that or want that, we do that for sure. We have a, a lot of connections with different facilities across the country and ones that we've um, really vetted to make sure they're not um, on, on the side of that whole process that has been in not good light over the years. Yeah, no, that's, you, you do your due diligence and kind of CYA yourself to make sure the patient's getting the best care possible. For sure. Yeah. So, and, and I kind of, we kind of already answered this part of it, but in your opinion, how important is integrating mental health into someone's detox and recovery? It's a hundred percent. I mean, when we, um, when we meet with the patients and we do our intake, we, we know that trauma creates addiction for the most part. I would say 80% of our patients had some type of traumatic experience that took them down this path of addiction. 20% of them had an accident, injury, surgery that a doctor or dentist put them on a pain med that led them to dependence or addiction. With that being said, addiction in itself is traumatic. Oh, yes. <laughs> I think the most important thing is the mental health side of it. Because unless you address the root cause of why you are addicted or dependent, that it's a slippery slope to go back there if you don't address that. So that I would say that's the most important thing. What we do, we can get rid of the substance, but you have to get to the root cause of the why. The mental health has to be on par to continue to keep the substance out. A hundred percent. Yeah. So. And again, I know we're all over the place. This is because my brain's crazy. You're so fine. going back going back to like starting the first time you see the patient or even have a cons consult with the patient, is there determining factors that are put into play whether you're going to accept the patient or not? Or are all patients accepted? No. Um, so we do extensive pre-screening before the patient gets there. So they have to be um, under age 60. They have to have a proper body mass index, height and weight. Oh, I don't mean to interrupt you there, but that's a good one. So the BMI can be really difficult or, or 
finicky to have a, a decent one when you're in active addiction. So how does that play? You, you can answer that at the end, but I, I think that's a good question too. That's, that is not a common problem. Okay. Um, the, we're talking about too high of a BMI, not too low. Got you. Okay. Good. Um, Thank you. Uh, the medications they're on and for what reason? Um, the, um, what substances they're using. I mean, that, you know, we have to really take all of that into consideration. And how ready is the person? Is the person coming because they're court ordered? Are they coming because they're being forced to by a friend or family member? Are they doing it for the right reason? We only take between six and 10 patients a week. Our slots are coveted. So I only want people to be here who are really ready. Yeah. It so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Let's talk about that for a little bit, that it, if you're doing things, so in residential treatment, people are told, you know, like, why are you here? Oh, my relationship. I want my relationship to get better. Or the court's making me. And the general consensus after that statement is you're not going to last if you're not doing it for yourself, essentially. Correct. So let, let's talk about that for a little bit. So what do you see in, in, so what's your thought process on that? Let's start there. Well, I would say that for the most part, um, the people we speak to are really ready. By the time they get to us, they personally are really ready. But if we get, um, as an example, a mom who calls and she's doing all the talking, all the questions, all the concerns, all that's nice if you're doing the research, but we need to talk to your son He's the one coming for treatment. Well, I don't know that he really wants to come. Well, that's he, not, yeah. That's not where we need to be. We need to be at your son wants to get help. As a parent, of course, we always want our kids to be better and do better. But if you're the one coming for treatment, you have to be actively involved in your own recovery. Show some some enthusiasm or some some concern that you're right. even thinking about it. Right. So you know that I think that's probably our biggest challenge is that, you know, the parents want their kids to come and get help, but we they have to be invested. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that a hundred percent. So I have one last like burning question and then we'll be able to dive into anything else that you want to kind of divulge to the, to the listeners. Um, so we know that detox, as mentioned, is a very finicky stage to be in. A lot of people leave or AMA leave AMA because they're feeling bad. They can't exist in their own skin because of withdrawals. Um, and that is a very common thing when you're in normal RTCs or just traditional detoxes. It's a very common thing. Right. How common is it? Is how common is it in your world? Um, it isn't because when the patients get to us on Monday, if they're um, if they're driving in, they can bring whatever they need to be comfortable with them. Mm -hmm. If they're flying in, uh, obviously we would never encourage them to you know catch a pill. Yeah. Uh, so we have medication to keep them comfortable when they arrive. So we, we've really got this down to a science. We don't want anyone suffering. You know, yeah. I, I started doing this job because I had a son who was um, addicted and we were treated with such a level of disrespect and stigma. And it, it really was quite disturbing to see how ashamed a lot of these places make the patient and their families feel yeah and in it in what we do we believe people should be treated with respect and really honored for taking the brave step of fixing something that's so dysfunctional in their life i agree and so when they get to us we don't want them to suffer we give them anything we can to be comfortable so all of those pre-detox symptoms um, we can address again with medication to keep them comfortable until the sedation. I, I love what you guys are doing. And I, I know I've said that a bunch of times, but it's, it's phenomenal. Cause I'm telling you, you guys are revolutionizing the way people get clean because I've seen it many times. And, and with myself, it was, it was the biggest step was just getting to detox 
because I knew what was about to come. Right. I was going to feel like death for the next seven to 10 days. I and am- maybe even longer than that. I understand that. I've had a lot of children and I remember being so hopeful and youthful with my first one. And then I realized how much it hurts to have a baby. (laughs) Every one I had after that, I'd be like, oh, damn, (laughs) this is going to hurt like a, like, yeah, I get it. Not that having a baby is the same as detox. No, (laughs) I'm done. I'm just saying that impending doom yes that's a perfect word for it impending doom you know it's coming yeah and i think you guys are changing the way people get clean and i believe you guys are getting a demographic that wouldn't have got clean in the first place because of withdrawals that's actually the greatest part of my job is um talking to patients a week a month a year five years later and them like i remember the first time i called you I was scared. I thought I'd never be get out of this alive. And here I am one year, five years. I have a wife, a husband, a family. Like it is, it is a blessing beyond compare. That is so awesome. I'm sure it's just, I can't even use the word, but fulfilling for lack of better words. I feel like that's extremely fulfilling is to be able to know that you helped someone and it worked and yeah. they are continuing. Yes. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you guys came to the show. I want to do another show with you, kind of a round table, and maybe get you and your doctor on here at some point. Great. I think that would be great. I, I love what you guys are doing. And like I said, you guys are going to be the catalyst to more people getting clean and staying clean. Um, do you have the floor is yours for a couple minutes? If there's anything you want to divulge to the, the listeners or anything specific you want them to know? Um, I, I would say the most important thing is, and I'll reiterate this, that we're not just here to have you be a patient. We're here for other resources too. So we have a lot of different connections. If you give us a call and you can come here and, um, it's something you can do, that's great. But if you can't, I have a lot of other ideas too, that we can help you with. Um, we're not the only place to go, but we are a good one. And so if we can redirect you to another place that can help you in another way, um, if we can give you some hope and encouragement to to remain faithful to yourself, to get this problem solved in another way, we're happy to help with that too. Um, Yeah, I I think that's the main message is that, that whatever way you have to do it, if we can be a catalyst for change, give us a call. I like that. Even if you can't help them or it's not going to work out, you're not going to kick them to the curb and say, good luck. You're no. going to push them to someone that can help or at least give them resources. And I yeah. think that's tremendous. And that shows that it's not about the almighty dollar for you guys. I like that. I mean, listen, everybody does business, every one of us. And, um, you know, we're, we are a private pay medical practice. We do have scholarships and grants and like I said, some insurances reimburse the cost. That's all good. But if we can't help you, we'll we'll help you find someone that can. So um, I, I think that that's really important that everyone get help how they can, when they can, but just get it because we're losing way too many people to this. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's a shame. It, we are losing people left and right. And I, I know people like yourself and, and like your doctor are, are trying every which way they can to make a difference. And it's, it's noticed. It absolutely is noticed. And I'm glad that you guys are here and doing what you're doing. And thank you so much for doing this too. It's yeah, a- absolutely. And real quick, uh, how can they get a hold of you? We'll put like your number up here somewhere or the tag. What give us some of that. Uh, so we're at advanced rapid detox.com. Okay. Or our toll free is 1-800-603-1813. There's three of us ladies that answer the phone. I'm Laura, there's Lindsay and Jeannie and any of us can help. Oh, perfect. Well, you guys heard it. Laura, Lindsay and Jeannie are waiting for your phone call. I'm sure they'll answer any questions that you guys have and get the ball rolling. Uh, as you guys know, this episode will be coming out on Friday. And just in a little tidbit, our first issue of MedFacts Magazine has come out. Uh, It's on our website. 
You can also subscribe to our newsletter that comes out every other Tuesday. And other than that, Laura, do you want to say one last thing to the listeners? When I say that we're a private pay facility, the cost for the four days in the private hospital is $9,900. Okay. There are countless numbers of people that think this is 30,000 or a million. Like, no, it's, it's under $10,000. There are payment plans. Um, I always tell people to do the math. If you're using $100 oh. a day, that's 36,000 a year. 200 a day, which is an average spend, is 72000 a year. So we do try to keep it yeah. at least affordable. Um, and, and, um, and again, we have, you know, payment plans and grants and scholarships. We're he we are here to help. Well, I, I do want to just say that nine grand, a little under 10 grand is phenomenal for what you guys are doing, considering all the medication, all the knowledge, the research, the facility, the overhead, that is a phenomenal price. That is, that blows my mind that it's that cheap. I don't want to use the word cheap because that sounds bad, right. but it's cost effective. Well, I think the reason why Dr. Aronoff is um, a, a very religious woman and she believes that this is more of a spiritual mission than anything else. Um, in our culture, we say that if you save one life, you save them all. And if we can save 500 lives a year, that's quite a mark. That is a massive dent in, yeah. in what's currently out there. Yes. Well, I'm excited that I ran across your guys' page. I'm excited we got in contact. And I look forward to doing a few more episodes or something with you guys. All right. I'll be ready. All right. Thank you. Uh, as you know, guys, we are signing off till next next Friday. See you guys soon.